Alana, Alana Banana, small town Canadian girl who uh, hopped on my Uncle Phil's semi when I was 19 because I just, although I appreciated where I grew up and I had a lot of great memories, I wasn't meant to be there. There was something very global, something embracing the mystery, uh, really embracing travel and what it is to be a woman traveling around the world, listening to her intuition. That's what I did. So Alana started off being someone who really embraced um, culture and diversity and beauty as defined by each culture, not defined by what society says or even my art history degree says. And, and now, now that I'm in my 40s, because that was in my 20s, Alana is someone who's created a, I've created a business, I'm a single mom, I'm walking my talk. I'm actually congruent in every area of my life. There is transparency and vulnerability and I empower, I'm the safe place for others to come to be vulnerable, to show me that demon they don't want anyone else to see, to transform that, not through fixing and changing and making it wrong and seven more steps till you're perfect. No, it's about embracing the good, the bad, the ugly, and loving it all. Because I think that's what I've done over all this time, is I love the fact that I'm successful. I've you know worked with celebrities and I'm cum laude graduate of Columbia, but I also love the fact that I've been divorced twice. I'm a single motherless mom. I've been insecure to walk in a room at times when I was so insecure that who am I sexier than? Who's sexier than me? What guy could I get? What guy? Could, I mean, just really, really a lot of panicked, terrified living for many years until I loved that part of me enough to, for it to transform. And now when I walk in a room and turn heads, I mean, I think I'm pretty, but it's not because of that. It's because of this radiance I exude from the inside out. It's because I love people for exactly who they are. I have space for everything that people want to bring to the moment. And I love the unknown. I'm no longer scared of the unknown. I've been so scared of the unknown for years. And to be able to transfer that to another person's life and shift their business, shift their relationships, shift their parenting, I go to sleep at the end of the day proud of who I am and grateful to be alive. My personal vision for myself is by the time they kick dirt in my face, <laughs> when I call it a day, is that sexuality has had all of the taboos and woo-woos dissolved off of it. And it is really seen for what I believe it is in quantum physics and hormones and all these other scientific properties also prove now. It's life force energy. It's our radiance. It's our creative, potent power. This, we can call it kundalini energy, we can call it all these different names. But when we just spin in our head trying to figure things out, we get exhausted, we're disconnected from source, and we're disconnected from ourself. But when we can tap into our body, into this life force energy that happens to feel delicious and juicy, and we can tap into that, we start to co-create with the universe. Magic starts to happen, synchronicity starts to happen. And it's not just about copulation, it's about generative, creative, and yes, orgasmic life force itself. And when we give ourselves permission to harness that, I really believe adrenal fatigue will stop, all those heart attacks will stop, the divorce rate will change. I think on a planetary level, things are gonna shift with you know, body trafficking, genital mutilation, just the issues where we've suppressed sexuality that have been rebounded into things that are not working on our planet. I think all of that is gonna shift and I'm here to put my stamp and do my part in it. My vision globally is to be a, a media personality that goes on television, radio, speaking, with even young people, universities, helping out parents, so that they honor their bodies, their sacred sexuality, their life force energy in a way that allows their relationships to thrive and families to flourish. And for us to have for women to feel confident in their bodies and in their sensuality that they won't be hurt, that it's safe to shine, and it's honored to be soft. And that that balancing of the feminine allows relationships in general to heal. And we see that permeate the world in families and in communities, and businesses, and globally. Big one. Creative, conscious, co-creation. Never heard those three all put together, but I love it. So the creative would be the life force energy. 
The conscious would be the connection to the divine. What was the third one again? Co-creation. Co-creation. Well, that's all there is to do is be co-creating. I believe we are a spirit in a body. So it is like God in us as us through us. And we all have, this is our birthright. This is who we are. But so few of us actually get to live it or be it. And the beauty is there's an ease in that. I like to see God and the goddess or the vacuum or intelligence, whatever you want to call it, as my compadre, as my homeboy, as my friend, as my colleague. Like I don't see me as this little meek person. Oh, if I'm only good. No, I, I see the present source as my, as my partner. And when I believe in myself and step up and take full responsibility for my life, that's when I believe the universe really starts listening. That when I'm a victim, when I blame, when I give up on myself, it's not that the universe has forgotten about me, but I just haven't stepped up. But as soon as I do, with full responsibility and full surrender to co-creation, fully having me, fully giving, fully receiving, all of that simultaneous, it's almost like the dimension shifts. Magic happens, ease happens, it's delicious. I'd like to be able to do it 24 seven, I'm not there. But man, that's what's available to all of us. Learn, play, grow. Hmm. Well, play, learn, grow is probably how I would say it. Um, Because to me, going straight into learning can quite often tip you into the, am I good enough? How am I going to get it right? Am I better than them competition? At least for the way I was brought up, if learning is the first thing here, I'm, I'm starting with not enough. I'm starting with empty. I'm starting with a problem. So for me, when I do play first, then I relax. Then I have no self-judgment. Then I'm like, what else could happen? It's, it's, I'm very lighthearted. And then learning becomes, it's inherent for in it. And uh, I don't mind if I make a mistake because I'm playing. And in so doing, learning a better way. And so play, learn, grow, and that would be what growth would be. Being able to address life as, I wonder what incredible mystery is going to unfold today versus what do I need to do to get somewhere? And all the juiciness is gone. So I'd prefer it be play, learn, grow. Thank you very much. (laughs) To me, pay it forward is coming from coming from emptiness coming from the illusion that i'm i'm separate i don't have enough i'll never have enough this emptiness the only way to really respond to that is to get i got to get more money i got to get a guy i got to get a better job i got to get 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 and it's never enough and there's really no opportunity to give and to serve because it's this consistent state of emptiness and once you're full got to keep it full got to get more pay it forward is starting on the premise that i'm already full I'm already connected to all that is. I'm already blessed beyond imagination. Granted, I might want to grow my business or have a relationship, etc., but I'm starting from full to start with. And when we choose, and I believe it's a choice, when we choose that perspective, that point of view, you're already full. So whenever you're in a situation, it's how can I contribute? How can I serve? How can we co-create? And, and what happens is you're in the state of fullness and you go to give, I believe it sort of comes through you to give and you you get even more full yourself. And it's a ripple effect. One supporting another, one supporting another, one supporting another. And what's fun about pay it forward is you tend to attract others that also enjoy paying it forward. And the cycle just continues and and it just spirals and grows into something so effortless and delicious, like a community of those that are there to serve and contribute rather than take and get. And I believe when we get to a certain mass of that type of consciousness on the planet, we're gonna tip. They say the tipping point, 2012, what have you. I believe Pay It Forward has, has everything to do with that tipping point. I have a nine-year-old boy. And from as early as I can remember, we did thank yous at night. Everything we can be thankful for. From as early as I can remember, we, we don't just give during the holidays. We give anytime we have extra, let's, let's give to them. So there's always a bag at the door that goes to the goodwill. Whenever we go to a friend's house, what can we bring? So I want to show him that he has, he is abundant, that he has extra to give. And he sometimes complains, I'm divorced, that dad gives gifts and you give experiences. Because to me, an experience is what lasts forever. I mean, I give him toys as well, but it's more about the memory and how are we engaging with others and how are we of service and contribution and how can we also receive. One of the, 
One of the, um, I don't know if it's an issue or a challenge, when I grew up, I was taught to give, 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 but I, there was a guilt around receiving. And so not only do I teach my son to pay it forward and give and be generous, but I also allow him to have. You're allowed to have. And from fullness versus that emptiness and guilt of having, there's even more to give. So for me, it's very much about a balance that he can have whatever it is he wants. And the more he's willing to have, it's just this effortless giving of giving more. So for me, it's very much almost like that um, dual toroidal, toroidal um, um, spinning of the atom. The atom doesn't just spin in one direction. It spins in both directions. It's not just expanding. It's contracting too. So when I think about that balance in the, in the atom, and I think about that as my son, I do want him to pay it forward. And I do love that he's a generous boy and goes right up to kids and gives, gives them things. But I also like that he's willing to receive and have. It can really be an expression of his peace and, and self-worth. Okay. For women, the first tip would be move, dance, anything about movement. A lot of us women sit at our desks all day or we're driving the kids around all day. A lot of it's very cognitive spinning and our, our feminine power, our life force energy, our sexual energy, kundalini, whatever we want to call it, is in our body. And so I say once a day do something to move. I like to dance on the coffee table with my son, one of my favorite moving things, or if he's at his dad's that week, just putting a song on as I'm getting breakfast ready. It'll ground you. It'll get you present. It'll empower you to, to engage in every moment from a softness and an openness, not a get or done accomplishment place, which can actually push away everything you want. Move. Two, flirt, especially with yourself, especially in the mirror first thing in the morning. A lot of women, we can feel empty and we think we need a man's attention or affection in order to be enough. It breeds a lot of competition between women as well. So I like to start the day flirting with myself. I know it's a dorky thing to do, but I'm like, you hot thing, you diva, look at you this morning. Otherwise, I just go straight to the wrinkles and the zits. And once I start doing that, I take the flirting out and I flirt with the breeze and I flirt with the trees and the sunshine and I'm engaging with the world and I'm having a good old time all by myself. So by the time I get around a man, I'm not all, does he see me? I'm just Miss Flirt. And I flirt with women. Oh, what a great outfit you have on. That fills you up, makes you feel really confident, really alive, and you dissolve all the neediness and you become very welcoming. So number one, move. Number two, flirt. Number three, fall in love with your body. It's only gonna get older and saggier, sorry. There's only gonna be younger people or thinner people. You know, if you have that perspective, you will always hate your body. And on some level, hide your radiance, your power, and your self-love. So a practice every day is to love your body exactly the way it is. I'm not saying never exercise or eat well or any of that, or do your little whatever you need to do, tucks and things as you get older. If you wanna do that, that's totally fine. But I want you to do it from a celebration of your body not a, my body is so ugly, I need to fix and change it. Because that is so abusive. I remember when I coached Lisa Gibbons through Dancing with the Stars and she's like, my thighs, 52 million people. I mean, it's a very valid concern. But that abuse to these beautiful thighs that had, you know, helped her create her empire and walk around and chase her three little children, like her thighs, what would it feel like to be her thighs and be spoken to that way? So really think about what does it feel like to be your body? How do you speak to your body? And if you could speak to it with love, kindness, and heaven forbid a little celebration every so often, notice how you look youthful. Notice how the weight falls off. Scientifically, I know that the cortisol level will come down, your thyroid will balance. We can prove it all scientifically, but just on an emotional basis, if you love your body every day, you will be very happy to be in it. You will be perceived as very sexy and magnetic and very approachable and welcoming because you're not a judgmental person. You're an accepting person and everybody wants a woman like that around. Three great tips for men. If they notice that they are feeling hesitant, doubting themselves, kind of being the nice guy, be willing to take full ownership of that and start to do the work on the heart. Whether that's a therapist, a coach, a men's group, your church, whatever it is for you, if you don't, as a man, take care of your heart, it's only gonna get worse and worse over age. The spinning's gonna get worse and worse, and you're gonna push away the very intimacy, praise and acknowledgement that you would love to have in your life. Men's hearts are not woo-woo or weak. 
It is the place in which their wisdom lives, their deep core intuition lives, and it's how we women can connect to them in their heart. So never see your heart as weak men. See it as a place of great potency and power. That would be number one for men. Number two, be around other great men like mentors or friends that believe in you and challenge you. Don't be around men that let you slack off or let you woman bash or even man bash for that matter. Great men have great men that challenge them. And maybe it's easier just to hide or avoid or not deal with an issue. I get that. But you're never going to live your legacy. You're never going to leave your mark on the planet if you don't have another great man around you that can speak to you straight and tell you to get off the couch and get out there and do it from a place of love. So definitely heal the heart. Definitely have other great men around you. And the third, I love a man who really is at peace in his body. Again, men often have a lot of their strengths based on their money or their status or what have you. And that's all fabulous. I love all of their accomplishments and I'm grateful for all of that. But when a man starts to see his body as just as valuable and the sensuality and his capacity, whether that sensuality is just sitting down with the sun coming through the trees, listening to a grandson, or whether that sense is being able to really taste his wife's dinner and be present and go, sweetheart, this is so delicious, or whether those senses are his, his sexual sensuality, where he's really able to be so attuned to his partner that just the slightest touch tips her into a dimension of surrender like she's never known really understand men how much power you have in your senses and don't just value your mind and your money but what you really have in capacity of your touch because kids need to feel safe women need to feel supported and men you can really be the banks of the river for them if you start to honor your body as much as you honor your money and your brilliant mind <laughs>